everyone for coming in tonight. Of course, you all by this time know who I am. I'm the executive director here at Hearthstone. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming in and taking in one of our presentations for Women's History Month. You know, this year we're doing a presentation every Tuesday for the first four Tuesdays. Um, last week's presentation by Kaya Swessel, who's one of our volunteers. She's our in-house Florence Rogers expert. She compared Florence's life, the, the, the daughter of the couple who built this home, to the life of the cook who worked here, a woman about her age, and how remarkably divergent their lives were, one for the better, one for the worse, and it's not the one you think. <laughs> it was amazing. Next week we have our volunteer Christine Williams We're in the back there. She is she's going to be taking sharing, notes, taking notes, <laughs> stealing the best of ideas as possible. I mean, you know, we got great work um, material to work with tonight. She's going to be um, bringing to life Appleton's own end of her. And so, how marvelous that we get to talk about one of Appleton's um, residents and, and her life um, in front and behind her big lights. Um, in two weeks, unfortunately, we'll be ending on a low note. I will be giving a presentation on um, how we can use artificial um, intelligence to do historical photograph um, identification. Women are often unrecognized, unidentified in historical photographs. And so can we use modern technology to put names on these very important um, women who are often unrecognized? Tonight, however, I think everyone's going to absolutely enjoy this presentation. Um, we're talking about the foundations of society, and we mean that in a couple of different ways. <laughs> Tonight's presenter, I will let you um, uh, uh, hear in her own words her own um, description of her qualifications. Um, she's going to introduce the rest of her team, but uh, please join me in welcoming to the front of the room one of our volunteers, Ms. Jordan Moose. <laughs> Right, so it's Russo. Um, and George, the camera isn't running. I didn't know. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I'm gonna turn on. <laughs> I'll stop talking. We've uh, got multiple cameras here. Well, and uh, yeah, it will be filmed. So if you don't want to be, you know, recognized, don't turn around. Um, <laughs> um, uh, my name is Jordan Russo, and I actually wanted to expound on what you just said, George, about women not being recognized in Victorian photographs specifically. There are a lot of. I couldn't work it into the. There was so much I had to cut from this because it was just like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Oh, damn. Um, but there was one specific topic that George kind of touched on, but there's a lot of photographs of children in the lap of their mother, but the women themselves are covered in a blanket because they either wanted just a picture of the child and they didn't want the child to move because photography was a lot different back then, so you know they had to just make sure the baby wouldn't move for a minute, you know, 30 seconds. I don't know how photography worked exactly back then, but it was just interesting to see all these pictures of women completely with a blanket up over their head, and it's like, is that something how women were seen back then? I don't know, but it was interesting, so on what he said. So, a little bit about me. Um, I'm a historical costumer, and I've been making uh, costumes since about 2009, so grade school. Um, I'm a part-time volunteer here, and I'm the one that, with the, that goes around the house with the white gloves and gets to lay out all the historical garments and pray nothing rips. <laughs> um, so I own a sewing alterations company in Menasha, uh, Beyond Fig Weaves, and I've got information if you have a ripped zipper, modern zipper, I can do that. Um, I, as growing up, I was obsessed with Little House on the Prairie. So I was the kid at the grocery store wearing the little bonnet and wearing the, <laughs> the whole dress and people looking at me weird and then grandma smiling at me. Um, and then when I was, well, when I was six, I first saw Gone with the Wind and my mom was just amazed that I stuck with it for the full four hours. And I just could not get enough of the costume. So when I was 14, I actually made this dress back here. Um, this was actually a practice gown. I meant to make this one as a practice just to get the pattern down, but it ended up being so good, I still have not made the real dress to this day. Um, yeah, I love making any historical costumes from almost every time period. Uh, before we get going, I just have a warning as far as uh, images and things, specifically Victorian pornography. <laughs> to, give you a, to give you a glimpse as to how pure people were back then, uh, showing your ankles was, you know, scandalous in some areas. Um, so for those of you who don't know what the Victorian period is, it was the time that Queen Victoria reigned in England from 37 to 01. 
Um, new inventions include the motor car, typewriter, bicycle, telegraph, and moving film pictures. Not movies, but moving film pictures. Um, first industrial revolution. Um, then there were, you know, as far as different classes, there was gentry, middle class, upper working class, and the lower working class. Now I've got a good mix of clothing that we're going to be uh, demonstrating. A lot of the undergarments are um, on the poorer side because I made them fast and I didn't realize I'd be making them for this presentation. So on the poorer side, but um, the actual costumes and dresses, like what Alex is wearing here, she um, that's on the higher end. So okay, so for the chemise. Um, Actually, here it's under you. Yeah. There's one here. I can hold it. <laughs> so the chemise was basically a tube, um, and could be doubled as a um, nightgown, um, but was basically the sweat guard because laundry was such an ordeal back then. There was the saying that it was wash on Monday, iron on Tuesday, you know, this on Wednesday, and all that. But it was such a hassle to have to wash everything because you had to boil the water, you had to scrub the soap, make the lye, and then on Tuesday heat up the iron manually. And then, you know, I hope everything, you know, lays flat when you're done. Um, so, yeah, that's the base dress, which is under Alex's outfit, but uh, we're going to get to that, that dress in a minute. Um, stockings. So, Alex? Yeah. And actually, yeah, we're going to, I think we're just going to talk about the dressing gown first. So, we'll, there you well, go. Actually, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, come out first. So, these, yeah, stockings. Uh, but actually, we'll just talk about the dressing gown first. I'm going to jump ahead. Um, so what she's wearing um, is the dressing gown. So this was this was dressing gown. So this is what women wore right away in the morning. So not necessarily with anything underneath. You usually the chemise, but this is what women ate breakfast in. This was Victorian sweatpants, basically. <laughs> so you want to walk down so you can show off the train a little bit too. This one I actually copied from from a uh, Victorian picture of a dressing gown that was made in 1885. So Very it has long. The, <laughs> so it had the, so the lace dress underneath and then it has the robe on top. So um, that one was a blast to make. I finished that one on Sunday. Um, so yeah, come back around. <laughs> she, she's doing laps. <laughs> I'm probably the user. Okay, so if you want to take that whole layer off and then you can see the chemise underneath. Maybe. So yeah, we're going to go really stripped down <laughs> as far as Victorian form, so. <laughs> but don't worry, we know what a chemise looks like now, so. Just put it on your hand. And what was the little piece around the neck there? That was a brooch. Um, yeah, I don't know if, there wasn't any in the picture that I found, but I needed something to hold it together, so. And actually, let me unzip. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. Zippers either. are not Victorian, but I cheated, so. <laughs> so. Okay, so. What would it usually have, like? Hooks and eyes. A million <laughs> hooks and eyes, and I just did not have patience, and it was just like, I'm going to That's a dress with a million hooks and eyes, and you'll see it. <laughs> yes, yeah, there is. And actually, that tassels. Sometimes it had. Yeah. Tassels. Yeah. 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 So. Okay, so you can see this is what women probably slept in, uh, the chemise underneath. Um, so very simple, it's too like just meant to, just as a base, just to kind of prevent a lot of things. So when they did wash something, usually it was this. So this is what usually had the sweat on it. Hopefully no other further layers were, you know, had sweat on it. But this was, if anything had to be washed, usually it was this. And then, Jordan, the chemise is the base layer every day. Yes. I mean, it's, it's everyday wear. Yep. Regardless. Of, every day. It doesn't right. matter if you're wearing, you know, the slop dress or, you know, the mm. evening gown, that mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. really. It's always your base layer. Yes. How many would, like, uh, would a woman typically have? Look at that. Okay. So, yep, we've got the stockings. So, typically, they were pretty much every pattern, basically, and made out of pretty much anything. Kind of like what socks are now. They can be as poor or as fancy as you want and as cheap and as expensive as you want. So it was kind of back then, but you know, cheaper were the cottons, you know, the um, uh, wool, even it depends on, you know, time of day too. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even want to stand in front of your screen. No, you're fine. <laughs> so, so, okay, so for shoes, boots, um, again, it's kind of the same deal. There's Victorian head pumps, some were slip-ons, you know, it depended on the time of day, that type of thing, but a lot of them were laced up kind of like this. 
Um, and so these are like cheating. Go ahead, walk. They're cheating <laughs> ones that I found in the thrift store years ago. <laughs> That's about, <laughs> yeah, and this that I have that I wear when I'm usually here, uh, and in full garb and yeah. not on my phone, is uh, these lace ups. So these are a lot of fun to wear, but probably not after a couple hours. So um, and the zippers are not modern, but that's just recreation. So um, and the reason why I'm talking about shoes now is most people obviously don't put shoes on right after they put their underwear on, but that comes with. The corset. Anybody who knows what the corset is, I cringe every time I hear the word now. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. So the next step is the drawers. Um, that's, that's this one. Okay, so it's just got one tight and two tubes. So for the drawers, this was kind of the underwear. <laughs> so this was basically two tubes of fabric. Um, great variety of ways. Uh, usually made in calico twill or cambric muslin, so cheaper fabric. So I've got one piece of fabric here that's pretty similar to how it would have been back then. You can go ahead and pass it around. So it's the cheap, all of these base layers are just basically the cheapest fabric you could buy at the time. Can I go on the front of the back? Yes. <laughs> the thing is I'm fine. So, um, just because, well, it depended on if the woman was dressing herself probably or had, mm -hmm. or had help. And actually that's why, um, uh, I don't know if it's specifically Victorian times, but if you notice on men's and women's shirts nowadays, buttons are on the opposite side because usually in whatever time period they decided this rule that um, whoever was helping a woman was right-handed usually, so that's why the buttons are on the opposite side from a men's shirt. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm teaching George something. No, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm going to share that. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah to interject here because there's a lot of... Okay, well, I, I was actual... waiting for you just to give me my shoe. Yeah, no, I'm the I, guy I standing back here with drawers in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, these are actual historical drawers. These are so. from our collection. Yeah. Uh, these are 1890 drawers. And you'll see that what um, Jordan has created is exactly the same thing. I mean, it was about convenience yes. for, for women. So it was basically two tubes, because by the time mm -hmm. you have to go to the bathroom, after you put on all 50 layers, you are not going to want to strip down to just go to the bathroom, and if you're having a weird day, toilet-wise, that's, you know, it's just the best way to get to it. <laughs> so, I'm just going to stand. <laughs> so, yeah, so they could be as fancy or as plain as, you know, they intended. Actually, the chemise goes inside the pants. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's bizarre. <laughs> as you can see, I'm used to a different time period. <laughs> She's from a different time. Yeah. And this so, one just has a simple button. One simple button that mm -hmm. keeps it all together. And is that is that woman's size or kid's size? I'm not this sure is, now. This is woman's. It is woman's. Yes. Okay. I'll say this yeah. would have been kitties, for example. Would that go around the upper waist? waist? Like the true waist. Yep. True waist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So just tuck it in. Yeah. How do you do that when it's this long? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I got it. So yeah, and you can see too, embellishments vary. You know, it's dependent on. What you guys are probably wearing, ladies are wearing underneath right now. You know, some are probably wearing maybe nothing, or some are wearing some very fancy underneath. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this was you know a little bit you know on the fancier side, but it depended on how much time we had back then to actually hand crochet all the lace or to buy it from the store, and that you know cost a day's wage. Um, so yeah, that's the full outfit. So I'm I'm still attempting to type this in. I think this one's a little bit long. Mine's from a different era. <laughs> a little bit long. So yeah, this is this was the base layer, <laughs> the second base layer. So yeah, that's yours. Um, so the corset. Now I don't know how many of you know how small they can get, but I I was quite shocked by some of them that I read. Um, so it wasn't. I learned this from her. Uh, up until Victorian times, women weren't being small wasn't the fashion statement because they couldn't do that. It was just standard buttonholes. Um, so it was just, that was the bra up until Victorian times. It wasn't during Victorian times too. But um, then once they added the metal grommets, then it was possible to really cinch it tight. And you can see how tight it can get. Um, yeah, so it was what society expected of a woman. If you didn't, yeah, it was uh, an uncorseted woman was thought to lack self
self-control and would have faced public disapproval and crude assumptions about her lifestyle. Only those who are prepared to be social outcasts went without corsets. So I'm going to use hers since she made one that fit her. Um, so yeah, go ahead and just pop that on. And if you guys want to pass this one around, this is one I made to more fit me, and I think it's actually too small for me. Um, so yeah, you can just pass it around the back. So yeah, if you can see, and if you pull on the actual ribbon too, you can see it pulls a lot tighter, and oh, wow. just no one gets to how tight they got back then in a minute. Mm -hmm. So this is one picture <laughs> from, I think, just based on the hairstyle, probably a little bit after Victorian time. So um, they didn't end at the hips, and uh, Okay, I can talk about this all day. Um, it, came, it became increasingly popular as a means to reduce the waistline. I've heard that one particular finishing school would strive to take off an inch per month, I believe it was, down to 13 inches. Um, and I also did more research. Um, it depended. The standard for the standard rule for every woman was four inches smaller than the natural waistline, um, but. If you had to go up a specific number, 18 to 22 inches was the standard, and this was 18 inches. No. Wow. Wow. I, I was shocked when I cut that a couple days ago. I'm like, oh my god. And uh, before everybody got here, I actually actually tried to go smaller, and I, it took a long time for my insides to go back to normal because I only went down. Yesterday before lunch, before lunch, <laughs> um, I measured 31 inches around the waist, so it's just... Um, so there was a lot of you know controversy over corsets too. Um, yeah, feel free to walk out. So I tied in the back in two different. Mm -hmm. Mine's laced up two directions, and then the bottom lace and the top lace. So just out of curiosity, I'm okay gonna... with me measuring you. I just want to see how. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. I didn't measure it. <laughs> okay, what are you? Any guesses? Twenty-nine. Mm -hmm. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. <laughs> Belly hurts just thinking about it again. Um, <laughs> Would this like cause permanent damage? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. This yeah. picture here. Ugh. It rearranged internal organs, yeah. collapsed the lung, and created such horrible weakness that there was just so much controversy over this thing. Um, yeah, there is uh, compromised fertility, um, lots of moving organs around, which is bad. Um, yeah, so tight lacing. So if you've seen, if anybody here has seen Gone with the Wind, you know mm -hmm. the, the scene. Um, yeah, George, absolutely. So this is the real thing. Here's an 1889 whalebone corset. So these stays are made out of baleen. And you can see um, that it, it wraps around, and you have um, hook and eye in the front. And in the back is the tight lacing um, setup. We have laces. And you can see very clearly here these metal grommets. The metal grommets are insidious because before the invention of the metal grommet, you couldn't tight lace. You would rip the fabric. You would rip the. What I should is have my other one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Sixteenth century one. Right. Yeah. And, and and you would destroy it if you tried to tight lace it. Absolutely. Yeah. With the grommets now, there's almost no limit to the extent of what women were subjected to. Yeah. Um, simply because of the invention of this small little thing. I mean, it's amazing piece. I, if you don't mind, I'm not going to pass this because this is 130 no. years old. And that's why I had gloves. Where is the whalebone? Is that old? The whalebone? Yeah, great it's question. <coughs> if one of these it would have been, is yeah. a piece of baleen that allows you to shape it. Multiple pieces, right. too. So, so we've got, what, about 20 on this yeah. one? Yeah. And they could be bone, they could be um, steel. Um, steel, they could be wood. Uh, the, the one thing about baleen is that it's in cartilage, and it gives you a little bit of flexibility, so it might be slightly more comfortable, but that's a matter of degrees. <laughs> uh, an amazing piece of, well, architecture. Yeah, that you wore. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so on every seam on mine, yeah. I did not fully bone this, because that was way too much time, but <laughs> every <coughs> seam has boning in it. <coughs> Is that comfortable at all? Um, I did. I made it. It is a Victorian style corset, definitely. But I made it more like I would make a set of stays. So it's so actually not 
Just more comfortable. comfortable. So we could put a boot in your back and make it uncomfortable? It's just about to <laughs> sneak over it. Don't you dare! <laughs> Like, I made it so that I could wear it with other people. A man could never ask that question, by the way. <laughs> I am so out of this conversation. <laughs> like, I, I made it so that I could use it with other garments as well. Oh, so. Yeah. Oh. It is the right style, but it's, yeah, definitely. Probably more comfortable than that. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm noticing, too, these uh, clips on the bottom, <coughs> those are meant to uh, keep up the stockings. So mm -hmm. those, you know, anything around the knee just meant to slip off. So that's so for me. When I decide where to go. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, do you know where you got that, George? Um, I had to look at accessions to see where we got okay. it. I mean, some of the pieces that we have were actual <coughs> wedding fruit silk pieces. Okay. I'll be sharing a camisole that's like that. I mean, okay. I'll be showing it in, you know, like <laughs> um, yeah, very But this one is 1889, <laughs> so it's not part of one of those trousseaus. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one it is. Okay. 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 <clears throat> So yeah, the classic scene from Gone with the Wind sucks, isn't it? But um, yeah, she tried to get it down to 17, 8, or 16, I believe it was in the movie. I can't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere in there. So <laughs> you can see why. <laughs> it was just, you know, a joke, of, a joke now, but it wasn't a joke then. Because that was just the fashion. You know, now it's just jeans, and those are, those are tight too. Um, it's different kind of tight. So for those of you who have seen Gone with the Wind, who here has seen Gone with the Wind? Okay. Really? <laughs> I'm just surprised. Uh, but for those of you who haven't seen Gone with the Wind, it actually covers most of the Victorian period. So it ranges from the bell skirts, you know, all the way up um, to this, where it starts to slim down in the 1870s, and by the early, uh, right around 1880, it went to more natural, because with the crinoline hoops, the big bell hoops, that had a lot of controversy, too. That was mainly why the drawers were invented, is because, you know, big catches of wind caught the skirt, but, you know, what's underneath <laughs> so um but and there was lots of controversy around that and why they you know lots of times they caught on fire and killed people mm -hmm. so that's why that went out of fashion so then by you know 1800s and when this house was built um it went to more natural and then by the late 1880s it went out to the big bustle so that's this cage type of thing so if you want to put on the thing that you made oh yeah mine goes with this dress because that was very specific according to to the oh. construction, but yeah, yeah. So it ranged from actually steel, uh, um, steel cage hoops, steel cage hoops, um, <laughs> to stuff like this, yeah. where it was actually <laughs> like basically a tiny little pillow. Yeah, mm. basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you just tie that around. And actually, those are seen in Gone with the Wind too, when they take off those hoops. Really tiny. Yeah. yeah. And then they have that. Though. Types of petticoats too, and it depended on how cold it was outside too. Because by now, how warm are you? Would you say? I'm warm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For the record, I am a very cold human normally. <laughs> so, and actually, it was weird researching winter petticoats because they had all the standard petticoats, and there was as many as they cared to put on and put over the hoop skirt to make the muscle smooth out and not have wire hooks through your very fancy fabric that, of the dress that you're actually wearing. Good? Yeah. Okay. I was going to just let you show that yeah. before I. So, this one um, was. Usually worn in winter if they couldn't get warm. This was like a knee length made out of flannel, so that kept you know, just a little bit extra warm. I don't know why it didn't go all the way to the ground, but that's, that's their decision, not mine. So, yeah, so the petticoat goes on. So we're up to one, two, three, four. This is layer number five. And so I have hooks and eyes on this. Little fabric tape so that it can fit in multiple sizes. Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead. So I just haven't actually seen this with the bustle yet, so <laughs> I'm kind of curious. <laughs> but your butt's off. There we go. Because <laughs> so, yeah. the side foot. Yeah. Yeah, it's so. a little funky, but. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I really want to see what it looks like. <laughs> Makes you look like you have a bigger, taller butt. Bustle. Oh, bustle. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So which yeah. is what they're doing today. So yep. yeah. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So the next layer is the corset cover. So this again ranged from as fancy or as plain as you wanted, um, but this was meant to if you were to put on the shirt or the blouse over just this, it would have the line of the corset. <laughs> okay. 
Do you have the corset cover, Alex? Oh, sorry, I just really wanted to see what it looked like. <laughs> and there's a mirror there. Okay, so the, next, the white tape top. Button and all that. So the corset cover was meant to smooth any lines uh, from the corset, uh, just to make it all um, make it all smooth. Got it? It's not going to work with this dress. Oh, okay. Because this one has too wide of a neckline. Oh, that's fine. So, so that's, yeah, yeah, it's one version of what it can look like. Yeah. But you can see all the different types here, so whatever you could afford and whatever you had time to make. <laughs> that, that so, so, so may I inter yeah. interject yeah, you've got a question? The yeah. So we've got we've got the corset on, and mm -hmm. then over that you put the corset cover. Yeah. And that's to basically smooth out the line, so you're not seeing all those stays, the architecture. Yep. Yep. And just in oh. case one of those steel bones happen to poke through, it'll probably poke the corset cover and not your fancy silk or whatever you're wearing, actually wearing. <laughs> so. So it's sort of a buffer layer between the architecture inside and your outside dress. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to talk about the the, neck, the frilly thing. Yeah, we have one last piece from our collection. This is really to share. Pretty. This is so dainty, it's <laughs> ephemeral. Um, this is a camisole, and I'll, I'll go to the front and just sort of show everyone. This actually is slightly later than Victorian. This is Edwardian from 1906, part of one of our trousseaus, um, of one of our collection here for one of the brides. And so this is a, a camisole, um, and basically it's you know, it's just it's lace and, and silk, and it's a lovely little piece. Wow! It's you know it's, it really is. I mean, talk about dainty. Yeah. But the idea being that it's you know it's not as functional as some of these other pieces, but uh, and it dates from a little bit later time period where the rational dress movement has kicked in. Um, women are not wearing corsets. It's part of the suffrage movement as well. So you can wear something that is a little more. A little less confining and a little more refined because it doesn't have to function like some of these other pieces. But it's a beautiful piece. So, would that be what's the front of that? Be this is the front, actually, and it, it just has quite simple little um, hooks and a little um, lace. Uh, little, I'm really um, good looking. Yeah. I don't get the stuff on there. A little there. lace. <laughs> lace um, cool. Lovely little piece. And, and 